Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about. So Jose Mourinho um, has come out and done an assessment regarding Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and he has told um, people that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is out of his depth at Manchester United. So this is you know what Jose Mourinho has said. Of course, uh, we do play Tottenham uh, next Friday, the 19th of June. Um, I think it is a quarter past eight kickoff. Of course, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is looking to overcome Jose Mourinho again because he's already beaten Jose Mourinho once this season. We'll be in Tottenham earlier on in the season by two goals to one. Since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in, he has beaten Tottenham twice as a manager. So next Friday, he's looking to beat them for the third time as a manager. But I have got a lot of confidence going into the game. Now, I've been hearing um, that, you know, the game, Tottenham and Man, the Tottenham Man United game could be under threat. Uh, because uh, recently one of the Norwich players got tested positive for coronavirus because don't forget Tottenham recent, recently played Norwich in a friendly. I think Norwich did beat them by two goals to one. But Tottenham have, conf have confirmed um, it's not under threat because uh, they've said you know that no Tottenham players have had a close contract you know, with that Norwich player. So I presume you know that the game should go ahead and that. But I am really, really looking forward to it. Uh, don't forget, you know, before the football season got suspended, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, had um, said, you know, he had a lot to change at Manchester United when he replaced Jose Mourinho back in December 2018. And these quite a few things Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has changed since he got recommended in. Of course, Solskjaer, you know, so far has recommended five players into the football club and spent, you know, just over £200 million on them. Last summer, he recommended Daniel James, Anwan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. And of course, in January, he recommended Bruno Fernandes and Odin Agalo in. Of course, he got Agalo on loan. So, so far, Solskjaer has made four permanent signings. Um, he's also you know, got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into the football club. I think we have seen a total of 19 players leave Manchester United since Solskjaer came in. Um, obviously, you know, we saw Ashley Young leave the football club this year. After he enjoyed eight and a half years at Manchester United, he went to Inter Milan. Of course, we saw Marcus Rojo go out on loan to Estudiantes in January, now looking to get rid of him permanently. Also, two Smalling went out on loan to Roma last summer. Um, also, two Damian left last summer and De Herrera left last summer. After he enjoyed five years at the football club, Marion Fellaini left in January 2019. He was the first player to depart the club under Solskjaer. Also to Lukaku left last summer. And of course, Sanchez went out on loan at Inter Milan. So we have got rid of around eight or nine senior players. I think we've also got rid of a lot of the young players as well. So he has got rid of a lot of the deadwood. And of course, Solskjaer is planning to get rid of more of the deadwood in the summer transfer window. You know, I think we're going to get rid of at least five players in the summer transfer window. Maybe we could get rid of six or maybe, you know, we could get rid of seven. But in that aspect, anyway, we are going to generate money. I've also got to make an admission. Uh, Solskjaer's uh, promoted the youth very, very well. You know, the young players have been given their opportunities this season. You know, the likes of Mason Greenwood's been flourishing. Um, obviously, you know, Brandon Williams being given his chances. But there again, you know, some young players have found game time pretty difficult. You know, Angel Gomez's appearances have been limited at the club. Uh, Tahith Chon's found game time difficult. Also, James Garner has found game time difficult as well. And like I said, our record against the big six sides this season has been very, very good. We've taken 17 points against the big six sides this season. Of course, Solskjaer became the first manager in history to beat to beat Pep Guardiola three times in one season. Also drew with Liverpool earlier on in the season. Also to, um, I think we're unbeaten against Chelsea since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in. I think Solskjaer has overcome Chelsea, uh, Frank Lampard three times as a manager and that. So, you know, they are the positives you can take. 
And of course, before the football season got suspended, we was in a good vein of form. You know, we are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions. And this has actually been our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager in that. So I have seen um, a lot of um, improvements. But hopefully, you know, next week, you know, we can continue where we left off. You know, hopefully we can do that and that. But um, it's going to be a very, very interesting game against Tottenham. You know, Jose Mourinho reuniting with Manchester United. Um, of course, Jose Mourinho did endure two and a half years at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, won the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season at the football club and did get a second in his first season. But, you know, we did recommend Jose Mourinho in too late. In reality, we should have recommended him in when Ferguson left. Uh, the mistake Ferguson ever made, you know, was ever recommending David Moyes in. But the main explanations why it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho is because he had bad disputes with the board, bad disputes with a lot of the top players. Uh, and basically the board just weren't back in the signings that I wanted to recommend in to the football club. Of course, um, the vast majority of these players that we have now got are Jose Mourinho's because Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players into Manchester United. And there's only a few players that have left who Jose Mourinho brought in in that. So let's point to the equation. Solskjaer is inheriting the vast majority of Jose Mourinho's players. I think Jose Mourinho did spend around, was it £400 million or just under £400 million pounds at Manchester United. I think, you know, Tottenham made a bad mistake by recommending Jose Mourinho win. They made a really, really bad mistake. I think, you know, me personally speaking, Tottenham should have stuck with Mauricio Pochettino. Mauricio Pochettino did endure five and a half years with Tottenham. Um, Analysing the vast majority of Pochettino's uh, tenure, you know, Tottenham were competing in and out of the top four and that. But Tottenham did sack Pochettino last year. You know, as far as I'm aware at the moment, he is still mangerless. But, you know, Tottenham shouldn't have recommended Jose Mourinho win. Uh, Tottenham have made signings, you know, since they did uh, recommend Jose Mourinho win. Um, obviously, you know, they got Jetson Fernandez in, they got Steven Bergwijn, they got Giovanni Lacelso permanently, they also got Ryan Sessignon. Um, I think they got him under Pochettino. Uh, didn't they get Tango and Dumbele last year from Leon? I think he's Tottenham's most expensive signing, or one of their most expensive signings, if not most expensive signing, Serge Aurier. Uh, Davinson Sanchez quite a few years ago they also got him in so Tottenham have recruited you know some decent players in but obviously you know in January they lost Danny Rose he went out on loan to Newcastle and they also lost Christian Eriksen you know Christian Eriksen you know did endure seven years with Tottenham Christian Eriksen of course went to Inter Milan um, and yeah the bad news is, uh, from a Tottenham perspective, that uh, if the game does go ahead next Friday, which I think it will, uh, Deli Alley is going to be missing that game uh, because Deli Alley got a one-game suspension from the FA, you know, for them coronavirus offensive social media posts, and Deli Alley had got fined around fifty thousand pounds for this. But the good news is, from a Tottenham perspective, they've got a fully fit squad. You know, they have got Harry Kane back now, and they've also got Human Son now back as well. Uh, Obviously, you know, from a Tottenham perspective, they'll feel as though if we beat them on Friday, uh, their top four ambitions are over. Um, I think Tottenham, you know, are fighting, you know, uh, they're fighting to get a Europa League, uh, basically, at Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham cannot win anything in terms of Super this season because they're no longer in the Champions League. Um, they're no longer in the FA Cup. I think they'd be knocked out of the FA Cup by Norwich and that. So um, there you go. But these nine games remaining in the Premier League and these 92 games to play in all competitions. Don't forget the Premier League's been suspended for around 12 weeks now. So it's been suspended for three months. It got suspended on the 13th of March. We were supposed to be playing Tottenham on the 15th. But obviously, you know, due to lockdown, you know, the game could not go ahead. Like I've said to you, uh, these things that I am uh, really, really looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward, you know, to seeing Marcus Rashford back. Uh, Rashford is now back, by the way, from his back injury. You know, because like I said, overall, Rashford is one of our best players and he was one of our best players earlier on in the season before he sustained this back injury. Uh, really, really looking forward to seeing, you know, Paul Pogba in action as well. You know, Paul Pogba is now back from his ankle injury. 
like I said, I haven't really had, had a perception on Paul Popper this season because Paul Popper's appearances have been limited due to his injuries and that. Uh, don't forget, you know, we recently played West Brom in two friendlies. Uh, we lost the first one by two goals to one, but won the other one by three goals to one. And Paul Pobino played alongside Bruno Fernandes for the very first time. And I think the partnership between Pobbe and Bruno Fernandes will definitely work. Don't forget, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has changed their positions, uh, Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes. Um, obviously, you know, Paul Pogba is going to be our next number 10. He's going to be our next number 10. Uh, but several uh, times, you know, Paul Pogba has been deployed as a number 10 during his Manchester United career. So that means Paul Pogba will be playing just behind the central striker and he will be playing just in front of Bruno Fernandes. Of course, you know, Bruno Fernandes is going to be our number eight. United fans have got different verdicts on this. You know, some United fans will say, you know, we should put Bruno Fernandes in the number 10 because that's his predominant position and that's where he's more effective. And some will say put Paul Popper in the number six or put Paul Popper in the number eight. But yeah, our first choice midfield trio is obviously, you know, Popper, Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay. Like I said, Fred will play instead of one of them so often. I think Fred's enjoyed an exceptional season um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, because he has been given his chances as Fred. And I thought Fred, though, was an exceptional player during his time in Ukraine. Uh, but he's confounded his critics on as Fred this season. You know, under Jose Mourinho, let's be honest, Fred never really got um, his chances in that. Uh, Matic, he was impressive before the football season got suspended, but um, he could now drop to the bench. Uh, but I think he still gets some of his chances in that. So we've got a lot of mid field options you know you know the news on Paul Popper anyway um like I updated you yesterday it was stemming from quite a few reports and he was, and it was also stemming from Sky Sports saying that Paul Popper uh will stay at Manchester United beyond this season and it was Adnan Yanazai who currently said this who is Paul Popper's close friend plus is a former Manchester United player is Adnan Yanazai in that uh I said you know if Paul Popper you know Builds a good partnership with Bruno Fernandes in our midfield. I think Paul Pogba will commit his long-term future with Manchester United and end up signing a new long-term contract. As it stands at the moment, Pogba has got a year left on his Man United contract for the club to have an option to extend it for a further year. More than likely, you know, we'll trigger that one-year extension on Paul Pogba's contract. But as it stands at the moment, you know, Paul Pogba is one of the highest-paid players at the club. He's on just under three hundred grand a week. We know he's our most expensive sign, this pop, but, you know, because we did pay £89 million for him. So I think more or less now his future hasn't been resolved, you know. You know, and there's other things I'm looking forward to as well, like I've mentioned before. You know, I'm looking forward, you know, to the FA Cup, um, also to the Europa League, because the FA Cup in the Europa League is a chance of us, you know, getting some silverware on the board. You know, we've got Norwich in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, We've got last to play in the second leg, obviously, but, you know, we're 5-0 up from the first leg. But if we could win um, both of them, or at least one of them, you know, it would be a memorable first full season for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and all of that. You know, so I'm also looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to, you know, playing at a new ground as well, because, you know, we haven't played at Tottenham's new ground as yet. I think, you know, Tottenham did pay around £1 billion uh, for their new stadium. I still think they are paying it off, if I am correct. Um, obviously, you know, I'm looking forward to the Champions League race as well. You know, I think, you know, we can definitely get top four. You know, we are sitting fifth in the Premier League at the moment and we are just three points behind Chelsea. You know, so we can get that top four, but we do need qualification for the Champions League for next season. You know, we're really, really doing that. So that is the latest news regarding what Mourinho said regarding Solskjaer, saying that he's out of his depth. Uh, obviously, you know, there's been reports saying that the game could be under threat, but from a... From, According to Tottenham, you know, they've said none of their players have had close contact um, with that, you know, Norwich player that's been recently tested for uh, coronavirus and all of that. So that is the latest news on that anyway. That's the latest news on that. Um, now I want to delve into some news on Jack Grealish from Aston Villa. So according to recent reports, uh, Jack Grealish has uh, made a decision on his future and reportedly now Jack Grealish is desperate to join Manchester United so he basically you know he said basically you know that he wants to leave Aston Villa 
regardless whether they stay up or get relegated. Now, I think, you know, we are willing to pay around 70 or £75 million pounds for Jack Grealish. Don't forget, uh, Jack Grealish is one of our priority targets. Now, don't forget, it said from Sky Sports the other week that Man United's interest in Jack Grealish depends on um, Aston Villa's survival. So, if he did say if Aston Villa were to survive, uh, they would be willing to get rid of him. But he said, you know, if, if they were to get relegated, you know, they would be reluctant to offload Jack Grealish. As it stands at the moment, Villa are sitting in the relegation zone. Now, Villa, you know, have said, you know, they do want around £80 million for Jack Grealish. You know, but like I said, you know, we may have strong reservations about paying £80 million for him. There were stories coming out the other week uh, saying that, you know, we could offer up to five of our players, you know, to get Jack Grealish on the board. And obviously, you know, we can also double Jack Grealish's wages as well. But we have been in for Jack Grealish for quite some time. We've already revealed that Jack Grealish is our preference over James Madison. Um, I've already given you the few main explanations why Grealish is our preference over James Madison. It's because, you know, throughout the course of this season, Jack Grealish's stats have been better than Madison's. And also to his more versatile than James Madison. And plus, is a cheaper solution than James Madison as well is Grealish. So there you go. And Grealish, of course, is well Premier League proven. He did say quite a few weeks ago, Jack Grealish to Manchester United depends on Paul Pobby, you know, of what happens with him and that, you know. Obviously, you know, up until this point, Jack Grealish has spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa. You know, he has been a Villa player since the age of six. Um, he's been in their senior squad since 2014. And since then, has become an integral part of their team. So I think this has been the sixth season now that Jack Grealish has been in Aston Villa's senior squad. He has got a contract with Aston Villa until 2023 as Grealish. And he can play as an attacking midfielder and he can also play as a winner in that. So we are uh, looking to get a deal over the line for him. So he could cost us around £70, £75 million. Pounds. But if Villa were to get relegated, he'd be much cheaper. You know, Maybe he could get him for like £40 or £50 million pounds if Aston Villa do get relegated and all of that. So he's made a decision now. He's made a transfer, de a de transfer decision. You know, he's desperate to come to Manchester United. He's Grealish. So that is the latest news on that. Obviously, you know, earlier on today, um, I think, by the way, uh, the video that I did earlier on today is still uploading. Of course, I give you the news on Dean Henderson, didn't I? Uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer has come out and said that he expects Dean Henderson to be England's number one and Manchester United's number one goalkeeper in the future so we are taking a 100 we are taking a 100 million pound gamble because we have made a decision on Dean Henderson we've already confirmed that um we've confirmed that we will allow him to remain on loan at Sheffield United until the end of the season that we've already confirmed this uh, like I said, you know, this has been Dean Henderson's second season on loan with Sheffield United and I think he's been a revelation for Sheffield United and he's been Sheffield United's player of the season as Dean Henderson. Don't forget, you know, Dean Henderson has had, you know, a lot, um, quite a lot of loan spells, you know, he had a loan spell with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury and that. Uh, but I think he's the foreseeable future for Man United and he is um, a long-term replacement for David De Gea and this is why we're not willing to get rid of Dean Henderson permanently and that. So, you know, you do not you do know the news on him. Uh, but he will become our number one eventually, but as it stands at the moment, David De Gea is our number one. You know, David De Gea has been our number one goalkeeper for several years and that. Um, obviously, you know, you know the ongoing situation with Jadon Sancho. I give you the news on Jaden Sancho earlier on today. Uh, of course, uh, Gareth Southgate said uh, he doesn't have any concerns regarding Jaden Sancho's future, and he says he doesn't need need to leave Borussia Dortmund to succeed. You had Sebastian uh, Kell, uh, Sebastian Kell, sorry if, I, if I've pronounced his surname correctly, who is uh, Borussia Dortmund's head of football. He said that uh, Borussia Dortmund expect Jaden Sancho to stay. Uh, for another year at Borussia Dortmund and all of that. Uh, there has been stories coming out from Lee 10 Sport earlier on this week uh, saying that you know Liverpool are leading the race for Jadon Sancho, but their move for Jadon Sancho depends on Sergio Mane. You had Christian Fark, 
uh, the German football experts saying that, you know, Jaden Sancho will leave Borussia Dortmund on two conditions. And that's if uh, any club's willing to meet Dortmund's asking price. And of course, if Jaden Sancho does force the move. Obviously, you know, Dortmund have remained ruthless over their valuation for so long. You know, they have said, you know, they do want minimum 100 million. The Telegraph said earlier on this week that Dortmund wanted around £115 million for Jadon Sancho. But I think we'd probably have to offer around £90 million for Sancho, uh, at least, yeah, you know, to convince Dortmund to offload the player. So you know the news on him. Um, obviously, you know, earlier on today as well, I give you the news on Alexis Sanchez, didn't I? Uh, reportedly, uh, Manchester United are set to offer Alexis Sanchez a new role at the football club. And that's, of course, a squad role. So that means, you know, he won't be um, a first choice, um, a first choicer, uh, Alexis Sanchez. Obviously, you know, he's going to be used as a backup because he has been stories coming out today saying that, you know, Solskjaer's had negotiations with Ed Woodward regarding Sanchez's future. And it did say, you know, Sanchez will come back to Manchester United next season after his loan spell with Inter Milan. But providing that he accepts his squad role, Alexis Sanchez and that, uh, the Inter Milan sporting director came out the other week and he said that um, um, Sanchez, you know, will remain at Inter Milan until the end of the season. You know, Sanchez um, hasn't really played for Inter Milan because I think he's had a dislocated ankle. Don't forget Sanchez joined Inter Milan on a 10-month loan last summer. Um, of course, um, we wanted to get rid of him permanently, but we couldn't, you know, reflecting on his substantial wages. Um, like I said, there's no obligation for Inter Milan to buy or there's no option to buy in that. So it probably is now coming back to Manchester United. Uh, but Solskjaer did say in January that Sanchez would come back to prove everybody wrong and all of that. Uh, like I said, Sanchez still got a contract with us until 2022. But Sanchez did enjoy a difficult 18 months at Manchester United and that and failed to rediscover the form of what he produced at Arsenal and what he produced at Barcelona under Guardiola when he was younger. We're still paying Sanchez around 300 grand a week, despite the fact that he's on loan at Inter Milan. So you do know the news on him as well. Uh, like I updated you as well, um, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can guide Manchester United to a top four finish, um, he does get around a 1 million bonus for this. So this is why it's also very imperative that we do get that top four. Uh, don't forget, um, our transfer budget has recently been revealed. Solskjaer is going to be given around £269 million to spend in the summer transfer window. Uh, like I said, you know, £269 million should be enough for us, you know, to get the right calibre players in to the football club, you know. And Solskjaer's already spent just over £200 million since he came in and that. You know, so if he spent two hundred sixty nine million as well, that'd be um, over five hundred million pounds he spent on players. You know, since he came into the football club, you know, Solskjaer's already said you know he wants to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window because he believes we need around three or four signings. You know, to be back being a competitively level football club and to be title contenders next season. Like I've already said, to, you know, us and Chelsea are looking to make transfer moves, obviously to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool and that. And I've got to make an admission regarding Chelsea at the moment. You know, they have done really, really good business. Like I said, they got Hakim Ziyech in February from Ajax for around £38 million, or was it £37? Uh, they're on the verge of getting Tamo Werner from RP Lesbig. That's going to be Chelsea's second signing of the summer and, you know, their second signing under Frank Lampard. Uh... Obviously, you know, Ben Chaywell's Chelsea's number one priority target. Uh, Kai Havertz uh, said recently that they'd put a £75 million bid in for Kai Havertz, but I give you the uh, the news regarding Kai Havertz recently. And he does say now he's moved to Chelsea, he's in doubt because Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen are miles apart of Kai Havertz's valuation. So that, reflecting on that, there's a chance, you know, my club, Man United, could, you know, get Kai Havertz on the board. But there's some chance when you're, transfer when you're in even open yet. And I don't uh, think there's been a date yet, you know, to tell us, you know, when the summer chance window is going to open. And Chelsea have already made um, uh, nearly, th they've made two signings at the moment. Um, 
well, they've made one, but they nearly got Werner on the board. So they've nearly made two signings. And the summer transfer window isn't even open yet. So, yeah, they've done a really, really good business so far of Chelsea. But I think Werner's a really, really good signing for them because uh, obviously there was in search for a striker. You know, Olivier Giroud is the only the fit striker that Chelsea have got at the moment and that. But, yeah, you know, Solskjaer's already identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up. Um, obviously, you know, he wants to recommend a striker in. Uh, despite the fact that Odin Agallo recently extended his loan at the club and despite the fact now that Marcus Rashford is back. Um, obviously, you know, he wants to recommend a right winner in. He wants to recommend a midfielder in and he also wants to recommend a centre-half in, even though we have got a lot of centre-halves in the team. But, you know, Man United are looking to sign players, you know, that that will... Uh, looking to sign players in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's image and his coaching staff and all of that. Don't forget, Solskjaer did recently say um, he will um, avoid buying rotten apples in the summer transfer market. Um, he recently warned our players that you know he will not tolerate any rotten apples in the squad and that. And I think Solskjaer still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British talents to Manchester United like he did do last summer. Because three, because three of the five players that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has recommended in so far are obviously, you know, British show. Let's just put that into the equation. So, um, there you go. Let's just put that into the equation. Mate, like I said to you, uh, there's probably no things that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does need to work on as well. You know, like I've said to you. Uh, but I do believe now that, you know, Solskjaer knows what his best 11 is and I've got an idea of what 11 he is going to go with in the game against Tottenham on Friday. You know, I've got an idea as well of what formation he's going to go with. I think he'll either go with a 4 2 3 1 against Tottenham or the 4 3 3. Maybe could even go with a 5 3 2. But on a regular basis this season, Solskjaer's been going with that 4 2 3 1 formation. You know, I think in the games against the likes of Chelsea and Manchester City, he went with a 5 3 2 and that. But from my own perception, you know, we look more expansive with three at the back. You know, we really, really do and that. So um, there you go. So um, there you go and all of that. And um, like I said, there were stories coming out the other week, you know, saying that we'd taken a, what, a £140 million loan from our £150 million, uh, revolving credit facility to help us through the coronavirus crisis and, you know, to help us get the right calibre players into the football club. Don't forget, um, at the moment, our net debt is just over £429 million because it did confirm the other week it did confirm, you know, that our debt had risen up by almost £130 million. So that did get confirmed. But Ed Woodward, you know, has already said, you know, on quite a few occasions, he's willing to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, and he's also assured that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe, even though earlier on in the season, you know, we'd enjoyed our worst start ever. To, we'd enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. So I think that's around 30 years you know, Ed Woodward did say, you know, we will remain competitive in the summer transfer market. And, you know, he did say the other month, though, that we won't do business as usual in the summer transfer market and that. So, you know, this is, you know, what Ed Woodward had said. Also, too, you know, the Glazers are also willing to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well, you know. But I like I said to you, you know, we've been very critical of Ed Woodward for several years. We've also been very, very critical of the Glazers for several years as well. Um, and all of that, you know, basically reflects on how poor our recruitment policy has been, you know, reflecting on um, our poor selection of managers, obviously, you know, of us overpaying for players as well. And just some of the decisions that's being made, you know, are just not right and that. But there again, you know, for the vast majority of this season, you know, we've been very, very critical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that, you know, obviously, you know, reflects on some of the decisions he's made in certain games and all of that. You know, so there you go. But I did say, didn't I, you know, give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at least another season at Man United, you know, because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while. If it doesn't work out under Solskjaer next season, that's when I would get rid of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. But Solskjaer was so close to getting sat early on in the season. He was uh, very, very close and that. But give him at least a couple of more chance for winners because, you know, not every manager does settle in straight away. So let's just put that into the equation. Not every manager settles in straight away. You know, some United fans think Solskjaer's the foreseeable future for the club. 
and you know you can get us back to how we want to be and some United fans um, have got element of concerns about Solskjaer being the force here with future. some United fans think we need a manager in you know at the top level with a proven pedigree you know maybe such as a Jurgen Klopp or a Pep Guardiola for prime example but at the end of the day Solskjaer's a club legend he was a great player for us for 11 years he flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance and that but um, there you go and like I said, the game against Tottenham, I think, will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's 52nd, or would it, oh, sorry, maybe, I think it's his 51th uh, Premier League game as Manchester United manager in that, um, as he managed over 100-odd games uh, for us in all competitions and that, you know, so there you go. But we've, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era. We've sat three managers since the Ferguson era, and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, and Jose Mourinho on that. But I can't wait to football resume, uh, wait for football to resume. Like I said, it's the seventeenth of June. It's resuming, which is on Wednesday, and that you know, like I said, European games I think are going to be played in August. So um yeah. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very very soon.